Electric currents is the bread and butter of electricity. When people say, oh, there's electricity flowing through that wire, they actually mean there's an electric current through, flowing through that wire. It's the proper word for what we usually use for electricity. Now, a current or current electricity is simply a flow, so movement, of charged particles. And we know that those charged particles are usually electrons. And this is different to static electricity, which we talked about before, which was still electron static. So current electricity is a flow moving particles, static electricity is still particles of charge. Now, current is measured in something called amps. Okay, measured in amps. Now, when we say amps, we actually mean something called amperes, but we all say just amps, and the symbol is A. And Ampere was a French physicist who discovered a lot about electricity. And that's why he's kind of been memorised by having the most important, probably, symbol in electricity, this um, unit being named after him. So current is measured in amps. It has a symbol as well, so if you ever want to write an equation that's got current in there, instead of writing current in its full word, you can use the symbol I. Now this is really, this is where it gets confusing, because it's got an amps A for its unit, and a symbol I. So you need to remember that the two things are different. So it's like saying speed equals distance over time. Distance might have the symbol D, but it's measured in metres M. Now, current is measured using an ammeter. And this is something that we talked about last video. Okay, It's measured using an ammeter. And we put that into our circuit diagram, we saw. And we can put it into our circuit to measure current. And all it does is it counts how many electrons are passing each second. So an ammeter is just a counter. You might have done a modelling class where you stood there and you counted how many people were walking past you. It's the same kind of thing. So an amateur just, just counts how many electrons go past each second. Now, if the electrons are moving quicker, that means that more of them are going to get past the amateur every second, and that means we've increased the current. So to increase a current, to increase the current, all that means is that we've increased the speed of the electrons, and so we've increased the number passing the ammeter each second. And that's all a higher current is. A higher current is just faster electrons, they're moving more quickly. A slower current, or a lower current, is just slower electrons and moving less quickly, and so fewer of them pass the ammeter per second. Now, there's two different types of materials when we think about current. There are conductors and insulators. Now, conductors contain lots of charges that are free to move, and those charges are usually electrons. And the normal conductors we think about are metals. Now, metals, as you probably done in chemistry, are made of lots of positive ions, like this, in a regular pattern. So you can see my nice square-esque thing of positive ions. And they are held together by, as my chemistry teacher used to say, a sea of delocalised electrons. So these electrons are free to move, but they're attracted by the really positive ions here, and they keep everything together. So this is my delocalised electron, and this is my positive ion. Now those electrons can move, and if electrons can move, that is what a current is. Okay, so if they can flow, that's a current happens. And Obviously they won't flow if you just have a wire on its own, it needs a battery, and we'll talk about it in the next section. But that's basically how it works. So usually we think about metals for conductors, and they can flow, they can be a conductor because they can let electrons flow. An insulator is the opposite, it's something that doesn't have any charges that are free to move. So an insulator, in a kind of really simplistic way, is just something where it's stuck, it has positive and negative charges, that are stuck next to each other, and I'm going to draw it a bit more quickly like this. Let's see if I can get this one right. So, here we go. Oh, that's not too bad. So something like an ionic lattice won't usually conduct, because the negative charges, or the positive charges, because remember, positive charges can create electricity if they can flow, can't move. They're stuck in this, this bond. They're not allowed to move. So there's no... They can't move, so current can't flow no current. And that's all the difference really is between insulators and conductors. Conductors have got electrons that can move a bit, and insulators the electrons are really fixed and they can't move at all. So, we look 
last time at what a current needs to um, a circuit diagram needs to be, and we said that it needed to be complete. We needed a continuous loop, and that's because of current. So if you think of current as moving electrons, they're moving along around this circuit like so, and then they travel. And if they're coming to here, they get to this lamp, get to the lamp, and then they get stuck. This here is like having the Grand Canyon and no bridge. They cannot get across. There's no way that they can just jump. There's no way for them to go, so they stop. So the current can't flow because we need a continuous loop. If I add in my bridge, okay, now they can move. Now they can carry on. They can carry on around there, and they can keep flowing around the place. We need another thing as well, because you know that if you ever see a circuit which didn't have a battery, nothing would happen, your light bulb wouldn't, um, wouldn't light up. You need this battery, okay, or this cell as this is technically. So a cell is V necessary. I'll just spell that wrong, necessary. And that's because it provides the push. And it provides that by something called potential difference, which we're going to go on to in the next video. But it's really important that you know that, okay? Without a battery, without a power source, the electricity cannot flow. So current needs a continuous loop to flow, and I should add, add into there, and a power source. So, to recap, current is the flow of charged particles. It's measured in amps. Its symbol is I. It usually flows in a conductor, because there's lots of electrons there that are free to move. It needs a continuous loop to flow and it needs a power source to push it.